see what Bernie's saying. We are living through a completely unprecedented time in the American economy, and things are so confusing and novel that major trusted newspapers can't even seem to agree on the basics of what's happening. New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, both have reports about the effect of cutting unemployment benefits in Missouri and the impact it's had on the job market. The Wall Street Journal, which I would say generally tends to align its POV with that of business, appears to suggest that cutting unemployment benefits has seen an uptick of people in Missouri returning to the workforce. Quote, the number of unemployment benefit recipients is falling at a faster rate in Missouri and 21 than other states, canceling enhanced and extended payments this month, suggesting that ending the aid could push more people to take jobs. Well, the New York Times seems to be suggesting basically the opposite. Quote, workforce development officials have said they have seen virtually no uptick in applicants since the governor's announcement, which ended a $300 weekly supplement to other benefits. Or perhaps the most interesting thing here is that both papers... I think we should just force them to go back to work at gunpoint. I don't understand. Like, if they have a, a, a tidy little amount of money saved up from, from all of the uh, additional welfare that they got, we have to starve them out. And if we can't starve them out, we should just force them back to literally flipping burgers for me uh, so I can yell at them at gunpoint. This is the way to solve it. Yeah. Don't pay them more. That would be unacceptable. You know, because then my the cost of a burger could be raised by uh, 30%. You know, corporations will never be able to figure out uh, that, will never be able to readjust their pricing or uh, other areas that they spend money on in an effort to improve wages. Like, they'll never eat into the profit margin. They'll raise the prices. Okay, they'll raise the prices by how much? 30 cents? Oh, no. Papers also cite the same St. Louis Hotel's recent hiring spree to back up their report. While the Wall Street Journal seems to imply those jobs were filled because unemployment insurance was cut off, stating that no one showed up to their job fair until two weeks ago when the Element St. Louis Midtown Hotel had a breakthrough with 40 job seekers. New York Times, however, includes what the Wall Street Journal leaves out, the hotel's increase in both wages and benefits. The hotel, which is on a major bus line, started raised its starting wage to $13.50 an hour, the second increase in two months. It also offers benefits and a $50 a month transportation allowance. The number of applicants shot up to 40 from a handful the previous month after the second wage increase. And even that's not enough, but hey, you know. Same state, same economic story, two very different conclusions. Senator Bernie Sanders, independent from Vermont, is the chairman of the powerful Senate Budget Committee. Last year, he fought to get Americans $600 extra of unemployment benefits in that COVID stimulus bill, which were then continued, uh, and he joins me now. This is You're the reason I can't get my burgers, brother. What the fuck? You're the reason my favorite burger joint no longer has the same amount of slaves, brother. What the fuck? I hate you, Bernardo. This is, I don't even think this is as big as a problem. Maybe in like my neighborhood or the areas that I've been in in Los Angeles, I don't see a lot of businesses. Uh, it is purely anecdotal. Hassel. I don't see a lot of businesses suffering from, uh, you know, a, a lack of, uh, enthusiastic uh, people trying to get jobs, but then again, it is purely I work for my state's sampling bias. Uh, it's it purely anecdotal. Problem. Um, I'm sure it it could be uh, happening uh, in other places, but regardless, this is plagiarism. What? Why is that? Okay, whatever. Um. But regardless, the solution is, you know, the solution is probably higher wages. <laughs> this has become um, an ongoing question among economists, and I want to take a sort of open mind to it because it does seem to me like it's not an insane idea to think at the margins it might be having some effects of, of people's behavior. Um, what is your sense when you look out and see that all these Republican governors have unilaterally taking the step to cut their folks off this this extra supplement and what it means for people and what it means for, jo for, for job markets? Well, from day one, Republicans opposed uh, adding a supplement to normal unemployment. If you go more into depth into if you raise wages, the cost of everything goes up argument, it's bullshit. 
first and foremost, a lot of these corporations, um, a lot of these businesses have a profit margin that they can tap into and lower the profit margin for owners and those who own a, have an ownership stake in the business in an effort to uh, improve the wages, in an effort to increase the wages. Another thing that they can do is, yes, increase the cost, right, to the consumer. Um, same with small businesses. I don't know why people say, what about small businesses? Same with small businesses. Now, it, it is the same with small businesses. You're, you're like looking at edge cases no matter what, which the government could help uh, and, and uh, eliminate that burden. So, ultimately, uh, ultimately, no matter which way you cut it, like, prices and cost is increased steadily, whereas wages have remained stagnant. So, it, clearly, it's not just about uh, the, the cost of labor. So, what's up with that? Why, have we, why don't we ever fucking question it in that regard? It literally still, like, cost of, of, of a burger goes up regardless. Cost of many things have gone up regardless of how much you pay the labor. And the answer should always be, so what? It's not going to go up by $10. People falsely assume that if wages increase by $10, then so does the burger. That's not how that works. I don't know why people literally think, like, we're going to pay $20 for a taco. Like, that's not how that works, you fucking idiot. It's not like a one-to-one. -one. Okay? That's not how it works. Just look at any other country where the minimum wage is significantly higher and how much they pay for burgles, and you will understand. I do not have a problem with a 30 cent increase. Especially if that means that uh, people's wages will increase tremendously. No offense, but sounds like you're about to cry when giving this take. What? Why? No, I'm, I'm not about to cry, but regardless, um, as I was saying, it's a, it's a very silly notion that um, it is going to be uh, completely unmanageable and that people are not going to be able to hey, pay. If you can't I afford to pay your workers, your business model has failed. Why are these small business tyrants allowed to act like they own slaves? Yeah, I, that's the other counter to it, which is I like, what is the point in which it's uh, acceptable? Keep up the good to subjugate your your servants to wage slavery. Like, okay, well, my business will fail if I have to pay my workers more. Oh, damn, dude, that's crazy. I can't believe your business is going to fail because you priced in, like, near slave labor to your, to your business model. Yes, I turned off the TTS. Okay, uh, I mean, I guess that we should justify slavery too then, you know? There's room and board that comes along with slavery. You could be a serf. Uh, and uh, at a time when tens of millions of people are working for starvation wages, uh, their theory is if you have low unemployment benefits, you can starve people back to work. And obviously, FTP. I think that that is unacceptable. I think one of the things that's happening is a lot of people right now are rethinking work and they're sick and tired of working for wages that are totally inadequate. And uh, that is why, by the way, we are moving aggressively to a reconciliation bill, which is going to create millions of good paying jobs, rebuilding America in many, many ways. So you, you, you segue to what I want to talk about in the reconciliation bill. A lot of back and forth on this. Um, there's, here's how I understand the state of play. There is going to be a reconciliation bill. 
everyone agrees on that up to Joe Manchin, right? There's 50 Democrats ready for that and the president, Joe Biden. So is that 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 part is clear, right? I, I'm right that there will be a reconciliation bill that moves this year. I expect that that is true. OK, um, what is in that bill, <laughs> the size of it and whether whatever infrastructure compromise is ultimately signed only contingent on his passage are the things being fought over right now? Is that also right? Chris, one of the things that has bothered me in the last month or so is there's a lot of talk about numbers, six trillion, big number, a lot of talk about process. You know what there is not a lot of talk about? About the needs of working class Americans and what we have got to do. So the truth is that real wages in America today are lower than they were 48 years ago. The very, very rich are getting richer. And what some of us are saying is if we're going to retain the faith of the American people in their government, we're going to have to stand up for them and not just the big money interest. So let me just tell you what is going to be in this bill. First of all, you got to deal with climate. Right now, the West Coast is, you know, a flame in a sense. It's record-breaking heat wave, Australia, et cetera. We have got to deal with climate. And if we do not significantly invest in transforming our energy system, future generations will never forgive us. Today, Chris, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty. I think Bernie's being ridiculous, dude. I find it totally normal. And uh, as a matter of fact, awesome and cool that... Uh, Portland is 135 degrees like it's fucking Arizona. No, it's it's a it's a very normal thing that the Pacific Northwest now unironically feels like Texas. It's wild to see these changes happen right in front of our eyes in such an immediate and tangible way because one of the big problems with climate change is that it's not tangible like the the impact, the devastating, the most devastating impacts of climate change, we're not supposed to see right now. So you always offset. Uh, you always can just kick the can down the road because you're like, well, it's not going to happen to me. It doesn't really matter. Or it's climate, you know, it's just like uncontrollable. So <clears throat> it's kind of wild to actually see it with uh, these irregular extreme weather conditions and cataclysmic events occurring with such high frequency in comparison to previous years with the weather changing so dramatically and so rapidly right in front of our fucking eyes. And everyone's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, who cares? Eh, who cares? Fuck it. Eh, who cares, dude? It's fine. It's all right. Uh, I ordered some more stuff. Yeah, I ordered Bang Energy Drink, actually. Yeah. From the PNW, felt like opening an oven yesterday. Of any major country on Earth. That is why we have to extend or make permanent the child tax credit. 300 bucks per child for working class families. Does anyone deny that our child care system is totally dysfunctional? We have got to deal with that. In the richest country on earth, you got elderly people who have no teeth in their mouth because Medicare does not cover dental. We don't cover hearing aids. We don't cover eyeglasses. We have got to do that. We have got I mean, we won't even do health care in this country. I've, I've given up on America almost completely at this point. Like... We won't even do health care coverage for our We won't even do health care coverage for our, our citizens. So I, I don't know why we would even give a shit about climate change. In a lot of instances, climate change uh at the very least like targets uh lower uh people in like uh, worse economic conditions, right? Like, the, the immediate target is, the immediate target is almost always, like, poor people. So that's one way that, uh, or that's one reason that people don't give a shit. It's like, rich people can avoid it, i.e., you know, 
Theodore Jebediah Cruz. When climate change hits or when uh, extreme weather conditions cause blackouts in Texas, you can just go to Cancun. I can just go to Cancun. And it don't matter to me. I'll go watch my porn rooney in Cancun. Where it's like poor people are fucking suffering. So that's one reason why people don't really care about it as much. Because things that impact the poors, well, they're easier to avoid and cast aside. Or when you think about what's going on in Puerto Rico with a completely destroyed uh, infrastructure ripe for devastation in the immediate aftermath of a uh, climate disaster. Because people don't care. Got to have universal pre-K. We have got to have a major housing bill because you got a half a million people who are sleeping out on the streets and 18 million households spending 50% of their limited incomes on housing. We've got to make higher education affordable. Those are the issues that are important to the American people, and that is why we need a major reconciliation bill to start addressing the crises facing ordinary Americans. So just, I, I know you don't want to talk process, and I, I, I understand that. I don't really love to anyway, but I just want to be clear on this. Like, those things are... Please, can you explain theocratic distributism? No, I don't know what the fuck theocratic distributism is, dude. What the fuck? What is that? Like some sort of fucking... I don't even know what that is, dude. What? What is it? It's like Catholic socialism. Dude, people take, like, people literally just turn around and go, like, they, they take an eight values test. And they're like, oh, well, I found this thing in here. So uh, in my eight values test. So let's, let's just, uh, let's just talk about this. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's like ecumenical Marxism, kind of, I would assume. Is that what it is? Like Islamic communism or Catholic communism? You don't need to know all this stuff. Okay? Jesus Christ. No, it isn't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I actually don't know what it is. In you view as part of the reconciliation package, you would like that you want that to is move, the reconciliation package. What do you think it is? Right, it is right. that, and well, it I, is I, lowering I, the cost of <laughs> prescription drugs. It is progressive tax reform that says that maybe, just maybe, Jeff Bezos and other billionaires should start paying their fair share of taxes. That is what we are. Well, then research it. No, you fucking idiot. I'm not going to research. Uh, a theocratic distributism. What the fuck? Shut up. Shut the fuck up, dumbass. I don't care. And you're fucking stupid for caring. How about that? Talking about. And this is what the American people want. This is what we've got to do. Are you at all? I mean, I don't think, I think between the what's happened in the wake of the great financial crisis, I think with interest rates, like I, I am the number one person who says, deficits are not to be worried about. I know that this would be paid for largely with, with tax increases. I guess, is there some part of you that worries about a, a level of spending that is too much for the economy to basically deal with uh, in one fell swoop? Well, this is what I think. And I got to be honest with you and tell you, you know, we're still working on this. But as of now, we are assuming that we're going to pay for all of the new programs, paid family and medical leave, child care, housing, all of the ongoing programs by demanding that the wealthiest people and largest corporations start paying their fair share of taxes. But let me tell you, Chris, what I think most economists would agree with. And that is at a time when we have record breaking low interest rates, now is precisely the time to borrow and invest in one-time infrastructure projects. So that is kind of the premise that we're operating yeah. under. 
this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>